Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day for everybody. My name is Mohammed Hayya Al Sibai. I am from the Faculty of Engineering Technology and I'm here today for presenting for you an introduction for our course. Uh, thank you for uh, joining our course. Our course is titled Microcontrolling Start as Professional. So actually we will give introduction about microcontrollers. Uh, what I mean by start by as professional that we will give you the information that is going to make you step your first steps on the ladder of professionality. Today is, uh, I mean, in this small video, I just give some introduction and some definition about some concepts that you are going, we are going to use in this course. Uh, let me start with the course outcome. The first uh, course outcome is to illustrate the architecture uh, of the microprocessor and microcontroller system and uh, develop programs for application in embedded system using assembly language. Actually, in this course, we will focus on hardware and uh, software at the same time. So I will start with the architecture of the microcontroller and microprocessor. We will give some assembly language. I will explain later what is assembly language. So assembly language is to help you to understand the structure of microcontroller. Later on, we will develop program and, uh, and application for the embedded systems, a microcontroller and microprocessor using the C language. And the final uh, course outcome is actually to build a project using microcontroller to demonstrate the uh, report writing skills in technical field. So you will make a project and you will demonstrate how to write a technical report. So to get the certificate of course completion, uh, you need to complete all the mandatory tasks in this course. There are some mandatory tasks and there are some uh, uh, free tasks. It's up to you to take them or not. And you need to take some few quizzes, assignments, and at the end, um, we need to make sure that you make a complete project to understand how to use the microcontroller. By uh, completing this part, you are supposed to understand uh, the characteristics of the computer, uh, the characteristics of uh, embedded systems, microprocessor, microcontroller, uh, computer hardware, structure, and the ALU. So let me start with some definitions. Uh, I will call this part what is. So first one is what is the controller? What, what, what do you mean by controller? So the name of the course is microcontroller. So actually a controller is a digital equipment uh, that control some uh, other system of their environment according to response from that environment. Uh, for example, the, uh, the home temperature regulation or the security system. Uh, older controllers used to be like very large piece of machinery and they used to contain extern externally uh, from the system to control. Uh, by the invention of integrated circuits and microcontroller, things became smaller. So what do we mean by microcontroller? Actually, microcontroller, as I said, is an integrated circuit. So a microcontroller is one chip, it's a small chip that co uh, include the microprocessor and any other devices that used to do the control. So a microcontroller contains everything required to control an external system. How does things work? Okay, this is a small, a simple circuit using a board called Arduino. I will speak about this also later because today is just introduction. So usually there is a sensor, sensor like collecting physical data. Then there is an output device like uh, in this case LED or motor or anything. So a microcontroller sends the environment by receiving input from various types of sensors uh, and affects the surrounding by controlling other devices like lights, motor and other actuators. To do controlling task, the microcontroller is programmed using assembly, C, or other programming language. So actually, we will focus on two types of programming language in this course, uh, assembly language and C language. So we said like a microcontroller sends using a sensor. So what is a sensor? A sensor actually is a converter that measures any uh, physical uh, quantity and convert it to a signal which can be read by, observed by electrical instrument. So microcontroller actually read only voltage. So the sensor is a device that change any physical quantity to voltage. When we speak about microcontroller and uh, microprocessor, actually this is part of what's called embedded system. So what is embedded system? Embedded system processor or embedded processor is simply a computing device placed inside a system uh, that it controls. So nowadays, the controlling system is part of the complete system. So when we say embedded system, that means the controlling system is embedded inside the uh, general system. 
So embedded system is a combination of computer hardware and software and perhaps additional machinery or other parts designed to perform dedicated function. In some cases, embedded systems are part of larger system or product as in the case of anti-lock braking system in the car. Okay? So nowadays, like the controlling system is embedded inside the car. There, in any car, there are a small computer or small controller to control any device, especially in the luxury cars, uh, which has like very high complicated systems. Speaking about this, I need to introduce again what's the meaning of computer. Of course, everybody knows the computer, but computer is any device, not necessarily like a device with a screen and keyboard and mouse. It's any device that is able to receive that data, information, make some operation, some calculation, some uh, uh, manipulation, and produce again a new types of data or results. In this term, a microcontroller actually is a full computer. In 80s and 90s, uh, the desktop was very popular because uh, the laptop were very expensive. So if you look to the, any desktop, you will find there's a CRT display or screen, the keyboard, the mouse, the CD-ROM, the floppy disk, USB uh, uh, stick, I mean memory stick, and so on. And there is the box. So actually, all of this, what you see, is not part of the computer. They are peripherals. They are devices for input and output. What is the real computer is actually what is inside the box. So what is actually inside the box, if we open this box, we will find that we have a CPU, central processing unit. There is the memories, RAM, and there is the motherboard, which is kind of connectors between these devices. There is the hard disk drive and the power supply. So actually, these parts is the parts of the real computer. If we make a diag diagram of the structure of the um, computer, we will see there are some uh, boards. Uh, the boards are connected to the printer, mouse, keyboard, and modem. Uh, they are the bus. The bus actually is a connector uh, to connect all things together. So as you see, it's like everything is connected to this bus. Uh, then we have the disk controller, graphic card, which is connected to the monitor, the sound card, which is connected to the speaker, the network card, which is connecting to uh, this our computer to another computer. They are the memory, the random access memory, and there is the CPU, central processing unit. So these devices make a computer. Of course, nowadays with the uh, uh, revelation of technology, they are always like minimizing or making uh, uh, devices smaller. So be, now uh, be, they invented the laptops, then the smartphone, the tablet computers, and so on. So things are becoming smaller and smaller. But still, there are very big and uh, large uh, in size computers, which are the supercomputers. The idea is like when it's larger, that means it's more powerful. So if we speak about computer in general, we can classify them to desktop, uh, workstation, which is a um, more advanced uh, one, usually servers and so on. There's the notebook or uh, the, uh, we, what we call it the uh, laptop. We have the tablet PC. There is what's called the handheld computer, it's like small computers. And there is the smartphone. So all these devices are considered as digital computers. The, what is like make them computers is the ability of compute. So the, na the name computer is coming from the ability of compute, from the central processing unit, which is part of it is arithmetic and logic uh, unit. Okay? So all of them has the CPU, which is mainly the microprocessor. Now, uh, when we speak about microprocessor and microcontroller, it's a little bit uh, confusing. So what is the difference between microprocessor and microcontroller? Microprocessor uh, actually is incorporated the function of a computer central processing unit. So the central processing unit is the microprocessors in most of the computers nowadays. Uh, it's a single integrated circuit or microchip. When we speak about microcontroller, microcontroller is a small computer. So microprocessor is part of the computer. While, but microcontroller is a complete computer because it has the microprocessor besides two uh, memory, programmable input, output, and other peripherals. To make things simpler, we can say MPU is the CPU. That means the microprocessing unit is actually the central processing unit. The MCU, the microcontrolling unit, is actually consists of MPU, microprocessing unit, and other peripherals and memory. So memory, peripherals, and CPU makes the microcontroller. That's why we say uh, microcontroller actually is a computer. Preferrals, what when we say preferrals, what we mean by preferrals, it can be boards. Boards that mean the places where 
the input output devices can be connected. We have the clock, we have the timers, we have what's called UART and USART, which are used for communication. We have the analog to digital converter and digital to analog converter, the LCD drivers, and other stuffs. Of course, like it seems maybe confusing to you, this is new terminologies, it's okay, because we are going to uh, throw this course to explain them one by one. Uh, when we speak about memory, also keep in your mind that there are different types of memories. There are the flash memory, the SRAM memory, the EEPROM, and the EEPROM. Of course, we're going to define all of them later. Now, uh, let's have a, a more uh, a concise uh, look on the microprocessor. Let's, let's check what is inside the microprocessor. So any microprocessor actually is consists of uh, common four blocks. As you can see, they are the arithmetic logic unit, ALU, the instruction decoder, the register array, and the control unit. The ALU actually is the core of the microprocessor. It's the uh, arithmetic logic unit. We have what's called the instruction decoder. Instruction decoder actually is the one that converts program or instruction to actions. So when you write a program, it's stored inside the memory of the microcontroller or the microprocessor. Uh, I mean, the memory which is attached to the microprocessor. And then uh, the instruction decoder uh, try to uh, execute what is inside this instruction, which is uh, the program. There is the register array. Register array is like a kind of storage locations uh, which uh, with the general purpose and the specific purpose. Of course, we are going to speak about them. They are uh, handling the data between the microprocessor and the other devices. Finally, there is the control unit. It's control synchronize the processing of instruction and the data. It's like going from processor to the other devices or from other devices to the processor. Finally, uh, we said like a computer, so up till now we discussed many things about the hardware. But finally, let's speak about what's called the software. Software is actually the program. So when we speak about program, you should understand that in any computer, there are layers of programs. The first layer, as you can see here, is actually the uh, hardware itself. Above it comes what's called the, the instruction. Above it comes the assembly language. And above the assembly language comes the high level language. So starting from hardware is what we already discussed, the memory, the CPU, the other things. And then to write the program, we need to do the instruction. So instructions actually, in the early computers, there was no, uh, uh, how would say, there's no uh, language to write the program. You only it's kind of instructions using zero and ones and bunched uh, cards. Okay? So after that, to make things easy, they invented what's called the uh, assembly language. Okay? So in assembly language, it was developed to make simpler interface between the machine and the programmer. So it's like uh, assembly language actually is uh, like English uh, language, which is like to be converted later using what's called the assembler to machine language. To make things easier and easier, uh, they invented what's called the high-level languages. For example, C program and other programming language like Pascal, Tran, many other uh, languages for Visual Basic. Uh, all of this actually called high-level language because it's very close to English. Then there's a, a, a the program called the compiler, which will convert it to something similar to assembly language and then to instruction, which the, micro, uh, the microcontroller, the microprocessor can understand. So. I hope I give good introduction about what is computer. So if, to summarize, let me say the microcontroller is actually a complete computer. We will go in this uh, course to investigate more and more about the microcontroller, how to use all the devices that integrated inside the microcontroller to make uh, controlling elements. Keep in your mind, it's a full computer, but limited computer. It's not very uh, strong uh, computer. It's used only for controlling, not to make very high computation uh, and operation uh, similar to the uh, normal computers. Uh, thank you very much. Like this, we uh, uh, reach the end of this uh, video. I hope you understand now the difference between uh, many things that we introduce, and we are going to speak about more in an another video about introduction about what do we mean by digital systems. Thank you very much, and you can find here some references that you can refer to to understand this course better. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.